What moves the heart of God is not a program. What moves the heart of God is our true living sacrifice lifestyle that brings honor to God. Oh, afternoon, how are you all doing? It's nice to be back um, in Hyderabad and nice to spend some time with family. And um, thank you, Pastor Rani and Pastor Suman, for uh, the privilege uh, you've given me to share the word today. Uh, but this morning, uh, afternoon, I want to talk about fragrant worship. Fragrant worship. Because worship in the Old Testament, if you look at it in the Old Testament, um, worship was not about music right at the beginning. It was David who interjected and brought in music and instruments and whatnot. But worship originally, and even to today, worship is not about singing. Worship is not just about playing good music. Worship is not about just uh, uh, good drums, good music, good sound, good lights. Um, These things are important, but that's not true worship. See, true worship is our lifestyle that gives glory and honor to God. Amen? And see, in the Old Testament, they had, um, uh, in the book of Leviticus, uh, God gave uh, the instruction on how they are to worship God. They got to bring an offering, put it on the altar. And when the, 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 the offering was put on the altar, and then God consumed the offering and the smoke that brought sweet fragrance, the Bible says, to the nostrils of God. Amen. Now, come back into the New Testament. Now, in the New Testament, you and I are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, for God, back in the Old Testament or in the New Testament now, worship has to do with our lifestyle. Not just come and sing a few songs, sit up, stand up, sit down, few more songs, stand up and sit down, go have a cup of tea and go home. No, worship is much more than that. One of the things that Jesus can't do is worship himself. God cannot worship himself. Have you ever wondered about that? Imagine if Jesus sings this, How great I am. Sing to myself how great. Imagine, he can't do that. That's why he created you and I to be the worship unto God. Amen. Our lifestyle has to be about worship. What does that mean? It means that our heart attitude has to be about worship. It's not what you sing that matters, it's how you sing that matters. It's not what you do that matters, it's how you do it matters. Because you can sing and you can clap your hands and you can rejoice, jump up and down and you can serve in the house of God, but if your attitude is not right, then that is not true worship unto God. Amen. I've got a young lad in my church and we were talking the other day and he said, Pastor Peter, I sacrifice so much in the church and I do so much in the church and he's a bit depleted. And I said, look, God doesn't want you to sacrifice. God wants you to obey. There's a scripture. It says obedience is better than what? Come on. We focus so much on sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. If you obey, what does it mean? Have a right heart. Have a right attitude to God. Have a right attitude to people. Have a right attitude no matter where you are because what God sees. See, man looks at the outward, but God sees the heart. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. I think I'm preaching better than your response. Amen. See, God sees the heart because you can look a lot of, I mean, I grew up here. I grew up in Hyderabad. It's It's not who you are. It's how you dress gives you the respect. I may not have a single uh, rupees in my pocket, but if I have a suit, oh, it's, oh, it's, you know, look, you may dress however you want to dress, whatever you want to do. It's not about the looks; it's the heart that matters to God. And I tell you something else. I'm prompted to say: if you want to bring your children to church and think, oh, if they go to church, that's good. True faith is not bringing your children to church. True faith is you as parents leading your children in your house to follow Jesus Christ. 
That needs a stronger amen to that. Don't just send your kids to children church and go, let them sort them out. No, we have to have an authentic worship at home. And so I want to talk about this fragrance of worship this morning and what that means. And I want to share a particular scripture passage with you um, and uh, we'll go from there. But fragrant worship in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Romans 12, verse 1, verse 1 says, it says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God as a living sacrifice, as a true worship unto God. Amen. Amen. Now, he's not saying, dear brothers and sisters, come and sing a few songs on a Sunday, and that's your true worship. No. What he's saying is, hey, your life is a true worship unto God. You are giving your life as a living sacrifice. That means your heart, your mind, your spirit, everything within you, you give unto God. That's the true worship unto God. Now, again, when your attitude is wrong, it's not true worship unto God. Amen. Amen. You know, I, uh, uh, I used to t- teach at a Bible college uh, in New Zealand, and there was this one guy, and he wanted, he learned this riff uh, in a guitar, and he wanted to play that, and the worship leader said, no, I don't want you to play it. He got so upset because it was all about him. Worship is not about us. Amen. So, so I want to talk, and then look at this in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Corinthians 2, 15. Our lives are Christ-like fragrance rising up to God. Amen. What is it? Our lives are Christ-like fragrance. Not our singing. Not Today we associate worship to singing. I think we've gravely mistaken that. Our worship is not to singing. Our worship is actually our heart, our life that gives God the honor and the glory that he deserves. Amen. 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 All right. So he says your body as a living sacrifice, which is truly the way you worship God. And then in verse, as I read that, in a fragrance that is unto the nostrils of God. And he says in verse 16, but to those who are being saved, We are life-giving perfume. Amen. We are a life-giving perfume to people around us. You are a life-giving perfume to your family. You're a life-giving perfume to your brothers, your sisters, your spouse, your grandchildren, your grandparents. You are a life-giving perfume. Amen. That is true worship. That's fragrant worship unto God. And God is pleased when our heart is right with Him. Hallelujah. And so I want to share this particular story this morning in Luke chapter 7, verse 36 to 50. And I'll I'll encourage you to go home and read this at home. Um, And it's about a story of Jesus comes into a Pharisee's home and and they is sitting down having a meal. But this is Pharisees. It's like a church service. They're sad. Jesus sits there and he's having a good good church meeting. And but here comes a lady um, who is not who's a harlot who's a prostitute, who is an outcast, who's been looked down upon, and she enters in, she interjects this good church, and she brings in authentic worship. What she does is she's crying and wiping the tears of Jesus' feet with her hair, and she then breaks open the alabaster box, which is perfume, and anoints his feet. And then Jesus, sorry, the Pharisees start judging Jesus and say, Are you, is he a true prophet? Does he know her background? Does he know who she is? And Jesus, reading that man's thoughts, starts saying to him that what she did today is true worship and what she, because of what she did, that her sins have been forgiven. And so 
my question to us is a lot of us uh, associate worship to be somehow we think that coming to church and somehow we think that ticking the box is worship. See, in the Old Testament, the outer courts, the inner courts, and the holy of holies. And the priest, once a year, comes into the inner courts, and he offers, and when he walked in, um, then he offered for the atonement uh, for the sins of the Israelites. And the presence of God used to be, or the tabernacle um, of God used to be in this tent, uh, in the ark of God used to be in the holy of all holies. But today, in the New Testament, you and I are the tabernacle of God. You and I are the carriers of the presence of God. Amen. Amen. God is not in buildings. I was here on Tuesday, you know, Friday afternoon uh, to check something here. And the lights were off. Everything was, it was like quiet, like a ghost town. You know, it's quiet, airy, no one around, just a few people. But today when I walked in, it's full of life. Why is it full of life today? Because you're here. Amen. I'm here. What brought this place alive is not the lights. It's you and I. Amen. So you and I are the tabernacle of God. He dwells in us. And so our life, truly, the way we live according to the word, brings him the glory and the honor. Amen. You can teach a lot of things. You can talk a lot of things. You can say a lot of things. But what truly matters is how we live our lives. So, I want to read this story and I want to give you a few points this morning. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him, so Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain Im immoral woman on that, from that city heard that he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt be behind him at his feet, weeping, her tears fell on his feet and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. Now that is unusual back in the day. It's unusual to go and kiss someone's feet. Imagine I'm preaching here, I'm not Jesus. Okay, okay, I'm not Jesus, but just think about it. I'm standing here and I'm preaching. We're all happy sitting in this nice comfortable chairs and uh, it's nice and you know we're AC by the way just to put a pause on my preaching isn't God wonderful look at the transformation amen we can give the Lord a big uh, hand amen uh, only God can do this kind of thing amen no man gets the glory hallelujah what a transformation I was here in April, May last year, then October last year. Now I'm here. When I was here in October, we didn't have any of these. And, uh, but I love it. We see the church, this is not in the notes, it's free. Okay? We all like free stuff, right? If it's free, free we spend more money. Yeah, okay? But I want to say the church is the bride of Christ. Church is instituted by God, not man. Church is the bride of Christ and God is possessive of his bride. Hallelujah. When the bride comes under, under attack, the groom rises up. So God is faithful. And I thank God. I stayed up till 4 a.m., 3.30, 4 a.m. and watched the first anniversary celebrations. Wow. All glory to God. Amen. It's amazing. We can give the Lord a hand. He deserves the hand. Hallelujah. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, declares the Lord. Coming back to this, when the Pharisee who had invited saw this, he said to himself, this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She is a sinner. Then Jesus answered his thoughts. And I'm going to jump a few verses down. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, talking to Simon, Jesus saying this, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust off from my feet, but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. When you didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. 
I tell you, her sins, and there are many, because we all know her history, have been forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. I love that about God. God is not interested in programs. We are. God is interested in true worship. Amen. What moves the heart of God is not a program. What moves the heart of God is our true living sacrifice lifestyle that brings honor to God. Amen. So our sins were forgiven. So I want to give you four points this morning from this story. Number one, worship is not a preference, it's a purpose. Worship is a purpose. Do you know you were created to worship God? Not sing, I'm talking to live and live for God's glory. Amen. It's not a preference, it's a purpose. You are, one of the purposes in your life is to bring worship, glory to Jesus through your lifestyle. Now what's a preference? Preference is lights. Whether you have these lights or normal lights. God is not interested in them. We do, but God is not moved by lights. Amen. God is not moved by these comfortable chairs or plastic chairs. This is where I picked on Pastor Roger this morning. In a comfortable chair, we are all sleeping. You know, and we sleep and go, okay, let's have a good sleep. No, you know, it's God is not, this is preference. Do, do you get what I'm saying this morning? The logo on the chair is a preference. God is not, wow, they put cross point church. I am pleased with that. God's not pleased with that. God is pleased with our lifestyle, but that's just a preference. Do you get what I'm saying? But purpose is you matter to God. Amen. You matter to God. These things are important. I'm not saying they're, they're, no, they're important to have them because we are to be contemporary. We are to be current. We are to be relevant. We are to be impacting our nation and the city as it's ever changing. We've got to change. Even though we change our style, we don't change our conviction. Amen. Two people said amen. 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 Yeah. We can change our style. You can dress jeans. You can wear white clothes. You can wear black clothes. Whatever clothes. But if your heart is, you can wear, by the way, you can wear all white. But if your heart is black, how is that honoring God? Amen. So true worship is about, it's not about preference, it's about purpose. You are created. One of the purposes in your life is to be a worshiper unto God. With what you do. Amen. And this lady, whatever she did, she did it with all her heart. And Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 says, Work willingly at whatever you do. As though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. For men or women or people. Work unto God. Don't do it to show off. Don't do it to go, look what I'm doing. This lady, when she came and was kissing Jesus' feet, she didn't do it to go, look at me, this is a cool style of worship. She didn't do it to show off. She didn't do it for men and women's approval. Matter of fact, they were disapproving her. But she did it unto God. Amen. And I'm saying that you and I are created to be true worshipers out in our community. Out at your workplace, out in your families, out in with your mother-in-laws and your father-in-laws and your sister-in-laws and your brother-in-laws when there's a bit of tension. Amen. Now you're quiet. Worship is not a preference, it's a purpose. Hallelujah. Worship is not about us, that's number two. It's not about us. Worship has nothing to do about us. It's about God. It's about God. It's nothing to do with us. Can you turn to your neighbor if they're asleep, nudge them hard and say, worship has got nothing to do with us. Worship is about God. Now I can tell you a quick story briefly. 
um, growing up, I, we had a clinic group or life group. Uh, we are made, you know, we call different names, but it's the same thing, right? We come together, do Bible study and pray and eat food or cup of chai and go home. Now, when I was here, I, most of you, I believe, know Pastor Daniel Kishore. Yeah, he ministers here. He was my youth pastor. So if I'm doing anything wrong, blame him. <laughs> he was my youth pastor. And uh, we were in a connect group at um, Metuguda. And um, Pastor Daniel Kishore was a drummer, not a guitarist. But one day, I don't know what happened, but he felt led to grab the guitar and lead worship. And I was kind of surprised to go, why are you playing guitar? You can't play guitar. But you see, this is what he did. He grabbed the guitar and, um, and he, I think he only knew probably one chord. I doubt even if he knew one chord back then, maybe now he knows a few chords. But instead of going kind of worshiping Jesus like this and playing chords and, you know, he just kind of went like this. And he goes, how great is our God. Sing with me. How. It's difficult to sing and play with not having chords. But, and so then I kind of go, what on earth is happening? That's not the way to do it. You don't play the guitar with your one hand up here and go, how great is our God. And I tell you what. It sounded ridiculous to the natural ears, but the power of God moved. Why? Because Pastor Daniel Kishore's heart was right with God. I think now that I'm talking about him, please talk to him about this so he can buy me dinner. <laughs> I'm being very kind to him. But you see, it's not about, it's nothing to do with us. You play this, Z sharp minor, Z sharp, F sharp, two square. It's not that stuff that matters. We finick a lot about this is right, that's right, that's right. The light is right, the AC is right, the seat is right, the water is right, the weather is right. My question to us today is, is our heart right? Is our attitude right? Those that are serving at the back and those, can you give these guys a hand that serve as sound, take, ushers? You know, it's great what they do. It's wonderful. But guys, I want to tell you, is your heart right with God? Or are you doing it out of men? Because worship has got nothing to do with us. And that's what happened with this lady. She didn't make it about her. She made it all about Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Now, my other point is, I better come back to my points, is worshiping God in the breaking will bring the breakthrough. Worshiping God in the breaking will bring the breakthrough. Because we all want breakthrough, amen? Who wants a breakthrough? There are about... 70% honest people. Who wants really a breakthrough? Part of the breakthrough, amen, thank you very much. Part of the breakthrough, we need to be broken. If you're not broken, we can't have the breakthrough. But often we don't like to be broken, but we want the breakthrough. Amen. I don't want to go through struggles, but I want the blessings. It's in the valley that a character is developed. It's in the valley that what's really in our heart comes out. Out of the abundance of our heart, the Bible says the mouth speaks. It's in the valley. It's in the square, square what do you call it? The breaking, the, the crushing is where true attitudes come out. Amen. Amen. Good. I'm sure, I'm glad you're not asleep. So I've got a little illustration that I want to do. I hope I've got everything I need. I don't have, oh, it is here. That's nice. So I've got a bit of a perfume here. It's in the breaking. So she did it. I've got this. This is brand new. I've just opened it. Um, so the lady didn't go. It was very expensive perfume. And she didn't go. Jesus is very expensive, by the way. And I just want to spray a little bit. And I'm doing you a favor. And look, I sprayed. Whoa, that's a lot. You know, sometimes we have this attitude. Look how much I'm doing it for God. And, and you spray, God is not interested in your spraying. He wants the whole thing. I think Jesus is Indian. Because we want everything. 
You know, you want to buy some mangoes? You say, Baba, ordo dalo. I'm sorry, sorry. You know? Why would he give you two more? Think of, but we still ask. As if it's our right. We want more. You know? And so she didn't go, look, I don't want to spray in your face. I actually, actually accidentally sprayed on my wife's face. And uh, she was coughing. But that was God testing her. It's punishing her. You know? Because I never do anything wrong. I never do anything wrong because I'm a child of God. Amen. Oh, thank you, brother. You come with me. Uh, I should video you. Please send it to my wife. Okay. She didn't go around, look what I do for Jesus. Look what I do for... She didn't just pray here and then look, 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 look. She didn't just do that. And she didn't parade around. Look how much I'm praying for Jesus. How much I'm giving for Jesus. She didn't make it about her. Even when they were rejecting her. They were calling her. He's a prostitute. Why is she even in the presence of God? And so what she did. I love Pastor Harry. I'll pick on him. I pick on anyone that's sitting in the front. Did you use Cologne today? Shall we? We want Pastor Harry to spell nice. Amen. Only Pastor David said amen. You know, I have a dentist friend. And he said to me, Peter, the worst thing is when people don't realize their own breath, smell of their breath. You know, they think they smell beautiful. <laughs> but when you, they open your mouth. See, this is the thing. We never know our own mistakes. But we pick at other people's mistakes. Come on. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's easy to talk and go, oh, hold on my breath, but until you open your mouth and the dentist looks at it and goes, poor. <laughs> there are a lot of jokes about, uh, my wife also works for a dental um, clinic too, part-time. But anyway, uh, it's not about them. Today it's all about me. <laughs> no. But she didn't just pray. But you see, even when she was being re Re rejected. I'm just making sure I don't give her feedback. Even when she was rejected, she didn't allow people's opinions stop her to worship God. Amen. Amen. Don't allow your circumstances to stop you from living the life God created you to live. Don't allow your circumstances. It's easy to worship God when everything's going well. I remember April when things were happening, I was out there with Stanley uh, Jones and myself and a few others. We stayed all night over there. But it takes people. It, true worship is not on the stage. True worship, I'm not putting the worship team down. Okay, I'll buy you a biryani later, but it's not about you today. Okay, but true worship is us being out there. Amen. So she didn't just pour a little bit here and there. Because what she did... And I want to illustrate this. What she did is she realized and she broke open the, the bottle and she poured it all at the feet of Jesus. And the, Bible, uh, the research I did that says that the value of that perfume back in the day was a year's wages. Pastor Roger is manifesting me. Now, but the value of the perfume was a year's wages. Maybe here a monthly income is maybe our average is, I don't know, 1.52 lakhs. I don't know. But I'm telling you, she gave everything she had. She didn't spray and say, give me a breakthrough. She gave everything. Her heart, her mind, her talents, her gift, her thoughts, her attitudes, her heart, everything she had was focused to worship the one true living God. And I want to illustrate this. This is my last point. It's called, our lifestyle is a fragrant worship to his nostrils. Our lifestyle, not our singing. In Revelation chapter 1, he talks to the seven churches. And the first church, the church of Ephesus. He says, you've done everything well. You've kept the law. You've done everything well. But the problem with you Church at Ephesus, the problem with you, you've lost your first love. Amen. Sister, if Brother Harry doesn't love you, but he'll buy you stuff, it's of no value, right? You give it to me, I'll take it, right? Uh, 
but but when he loves you and he gives you even just a little cup of tea it means a lot to you don't give that to me okay but it means a lot. why because it's love that's what matters amen a true worship a lifestyle brings glory to god so what did she do i'm going to break this but she she didn't have a hammer the bible doesn't say i don't know how she broke it but i want to break it let me just check it's pretty strong oh it's gone oh it's broken when our lives are broken for god we truly permeate the character and the attitudes of christ likeness that's what the bible says abide in me and i in you and when you abide in him and when you spend time with god you begin to smell like god you know the beautiful thing about that lady on that day not only did she broke open the jar and poured it at the feet of jesus but i believe this is just me thinking it's not in the scriptures but then wherever she went she smelled of that sweet perfume wherever she went she smelled of that sweet perfume and so what i'm trying to say is when you are with jesus hallelujah and when you spend time with jesus wherever you go back to your work back to your families whatever your life is whatever the problems you're facing know that when you go with jesus you have an opportunity to smell like christ hallelujah and so wherever she went wherever she went she smelled like christ and that's what we do when i'm going to walk around i'm going to it's weird i'm going to stick my hands in your nose but you know here you go i like you so smell a bit more double portion you know but you can smell it see wherever i go now you can smell my fragrance i know it's a bit weird but that's okay but you can smell it there you go auntie hello uh, you can smell it but what i'm trying to say we are not just supposed to be christians on a sunday morning we are supposed to be christ like people from monday to sunday wherever you go we can smell like christ you want to smell it you can smell it too i did break a real one proof right yes thank you see this is our opportunity and i believe god really wants he gives us these opportunities where we can go out and be like christ amen so the question i have how do you smell today if christ truly opened your heart and looked at your heart what does your attitudes truly smell like do they stink or do they truly give god the glory and the honor would jesus stand here and look into your heart and say ah oh, you truly bring fragrance to my nostrils or would he turn his face around and go you may look like a christian you may dress like a christian you may talk like a christian but if our heart is not right then we are not permeating we are not releasing that christ likeness amen so we have a choice today do we want to have a good time or do we want to live for god to give him all the glory and the honor she broke the what do you call it the alabaster box she broke that and she poured everything she had and she wasn't doing jesus a favor she was doing herself a favor by truly pouring everything she had at the master's feet so today we have an opportunity today we have an opportunity to live our lives for the glory of god it smells beautiful up here it does it does it's permeating what kind of smell do you release i'm talking about your attitude at home what kind of smell do i release at home one day you can ask my family and this is i kid you not i asked my children the other day i said out of the nine fruit of the spirit which fruit do i lack and they got very excited to tell me very quickly what fruit i lack 
And I thought, they are mean kids. And they said, Dad, you lack patience. I said, who, how dare you? No, I didn't. But I do like patience. I'm learning patience. And then my daughter gave me a list of things that I need to work on. And then I thought, oh, that's pretty harsh, but it was okay. And then my youngest son goes, Dad, can I add a few more things to that? You know, but it's good because it's important that we truly radiate the glory of God. Amen? Amen. So the choice is ours today. As I read that, I want to read this scripture again this afternoon. It says in 2 Corinthians 2.15, Our lives are like Christ-like fragrance rising up to God. You have a choice today, my friend, if you don't believe that you truly are bringing the right fragrance to God, you can submit yourself to God and say, God, change my heart. Change my attitudes. I don't want to work, work out of pride. Pride is number one thing that God cannot stand. Pride is the biggest thing God cannot stand. And one of the great things we all struggle with is pride. Only few people this side are nodding their heads. Amen. So, I want to encourage you to, this morning. I want to give an altar call to those that have not known Jesus. You've never given your heart to God. Every eye closed, please, and every, every, every head bowed. And if you have never given your heart to God, and you've never invited Jesus into your heart and made Him the Savior, the Lord of your life, today is an opportunity for you. What do I mean by that? I mean that you're recognizing the Lordship of Christ by saying, Jesus, I recognize that you died on the cross and on the third day you rose up, defeated death, defeated the enemy, and you've risen as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and as a Savior. And only you have the power by shedding your blood on the cross, have the power to cleanse my sins, to cleanse me from all my sins and to make me whole, to make me a new man, to make me a new woman. I can't do it in my strength. I need you. And if you've never prayed this prayer, as every eye closed, every head bowed, would you please boldly raise your hand up so that the ushering team can have a look and so that they can pray with you later on and also give you some information that will help you to grow in the Lord. If that's you, would you please raise your hand up and keep it up there, please, for a few minutes, seconds. If you've never given your heart to God, Hallelujah. My friends, if, if you as a Christian, you feel you've lost your joy, you feel, yeah, you're coming to church, you're doing serving in the church, you're doing things, you're just ticking the box, but you've lost, like the church at Ephesus, you've lost the joy, you've lost the love for God. Could you today say, God, restore the joy of my salvation? Because I want my life to bring glory and honor unto your name. Hallelujah. If you're one of those people who say, yeah, I've lost the joy, I've lost the passion. If that's you, would you slip your hand up? I want to pray with you this morning. If that's you, would you slip your hand up? Just raise your hand and I want to pray with you. Every eye closed, please. If that's you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, David prayer, prayed a great prayer. He said, Search my heart, O God. Show me what offends you. And you can ask God to search your heart and let Him show you what is holding you back. Hallelujah. Some of you, I sense that you love God, you want to serve God, but 
you also have this obligations to do stuff whether it's finances whether it's job or career but can i say you cannot serve two masters you cannot serve god and mammon you cannot serve god and the world but that's what the bible says in matthew 6:33 seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus my friend today maybe you've known god but today you have an opportunity to truly break open your heart and surrender fully to god and say god i come before you empty pouring everything i have before you touch me cleanse me restore me heal my heart heal my mind take my anxiety away take my depression away take my disappointments away restore the joy of salvation and renew a right spirit within me jesus if that's you father this morning i pray would you touch their hearts would you touch their minds Would you reignite them, cleanse them, heal their hearts, heal their minds, restore the joy of salvation, restore their joy, strengthen them on the inside that they will know how to walk with you and not faint, how to run with you and not get weary, how to serve you and not get tired, but do it with a right heart and God that their lives will truly bring that sweet aroma to the nostrils of God. Hallelujah. I pray a blessing on this church in Jesus name. Everybody said amen. Amen. Amen.